as well. We're now joined by Nebraska football coach Matt Rule. We just mentioned that we have that beautiful helmet in the background on our set, by the way, the one that you sent us, and we appreciate that. What's going on, man? I, I, well, I, I, I hope it. Uh, I hope it. I hope it fits in. It looks good. No, it does. So we were bringing this up, and we'll get into obviously what you're doing in Lincoln. But we were bringing this up on just coaches and the way college football is today compared to the NFL. I've always been told, or at least heard, that the pro football level was so much more intense, and the pressure there was ten times what it is in college football. Has that changed at all? Uh, I don't know. I felt pressure everywhere I did. So uh, I, I uh, you know, I think I, I think the thing about the NFL is just the season's longer. You know, like you know, one or two losses doesn't derail your season. You know, if you're sitting there at, you know, if you're sitting there right now at you know two and four, four and two, three and three, whatever the NFL is right now, um, you know, you can you can just get on a run and and go. So whereas you know. In college, you know, you lose one or two games. Sometimes your whole the whole season feels like it's, it's gone by the wayside. So, um, but I, yeah, I think there's a lot of pressure in college, in, in college athletics, and college football, and, and uh, you better you better know what you signed up for. Coach, that game last week against Illinois, I know that uh, a lot was uh, of attention was made to you, you know, putting the pads on on Sunday and trying to get the, you know, the physical nature uh, of your team kind of riled up again. Uh, knowing you like we do, I, I got to, I guess on Friday, I, I got to watch a lot of that game. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but if, if that game had been three to nothing Nebraska, but you guys inflicted the kind of punishment you did, you would have been just fine with that. Yeah, I don't. I don't really care about the score. I, I told the guys I didn't even care about the outcome. Um, I wanted the tape. You know, to me, it's always about the tape. What does the film look like? You can sometimes lose to a better team and play a good game. You can sometimes beat a team that you're better than and not play a good game. And so I, you know, we're we're, we're in a building process here. And so I wanted the effort and the physicality to be, you know, to be at the level it's supposed to be. And, and it's not like we haven't been that, but um, you know, I, I after playing Michigan. Um, I felt like when, you know, that we got behind, like we just kind of resigned ourselves to losing and like, you know, the old, Oh, here we go again. And as, as a coach, you know, I, I had, to, I have to cut that out. I can't allow myself to do it. I couldn't allow us to do it as a team. So we, uh, we went out and we played football again, just to remind ourselves, Hey, this is what we do. We play football. And uh, Friday night, you know, I was so proud, you know, we, we kept turning the ball over and I wasn't proud of turning the ball over, turn the ball over in the red zone. The defensive guys, you know, kept screaming at me to get out of the way. They wanted to go play again. So it felt like it felt like you know Jordan Williams and, and and Clay Johnson and all those guys I was blessed to coach at Baylor just loving to go out and play defense. Coach, is there a noticeable difference going into a bye week or an open week with that win as opposed to hey if that had turned out and, and, and been another loss for you? Is there a noticeable difference? And I guess also that extra buy-in of like hey let's just go play football and they did that. Does that does that carry over immensely into a bye week? Oh no doubt. I mean I think. Um, you know, I, at the end of the day, anytime you have a question, anytime you have a, anytime we have a question of effort and physicality and competitiveness, um, that has to be addressed. And so I thought we answered that um, on Friday night. Now, what I'm trying to explain to our guys is they have to re-answer it. <laughs> they have to answer it every week. And, um, you know, but, but again, it was, it was, what was really great, Craig, was the ability to sit there after the game and say, Sunday night, you know, guys thought it was the end of the world. I said, I guarantee you in 10 years, it'll be one of your, your, your best memories from your time in Nebraska. You'll, you'll be talking about it. It'll be a tall tale. But after winning that game, was it worth it? And they said, yes. I'm like, well, then why don't we just do that every week? And so um, and then coming into the bye week, you know, we, we put the ball down. We were out there at 7 o'clock this morning. We, we just pl played. We competed. You know, we're not working on the next game yet. We're, we're just, again, working on ourselves as a team, making sure we're a team that plays hard. Were there any people clutching their pearls because you happened to, my God, put pads on on Sunday? Uh, if they did, they didn't say anything to me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, I thought about it. I'm very, I'm, you know, I'm very, you know, I'm very cognizant of being safe, right? You know, I'm not going to any way ever harm anybody. But we only played like 48 snaps on offense or something like that. And we rotate a lot of guys on defense. So, um, you know, we felt like it was, you know, we talked to the trainer. He felt, he felt like it was safe. Had it not been on Sunday, it was going to be on Monday. I can mm -hmm. tell you that much. You know, the whole, the whole, uh, the whole, and we were in full pads again on Tuesday. Um, you know, we took Monday as a walkthrough day. We were full pads again on Tuesday. But at the end of the day, again, none of it was punishment. It was an opportunity to go play football. And uh, I thought the players answered the call and uh, they carried it over. You know, our rallying cry on Friday night was, 
you know, just play like it's Sunday night. And uh, they did that. How much of your job, especially in the, in the short term, in reestablishing Nebraska's identity is – like educating your players on the history of what the program was because you know that they wouldn't know like you, you would know and kind of illuminating to them that you you wanted to play physical that was Nebraska's identity you you knew at the very least that when the Huskers rolled into your place or you rolled into Lincoln that you were in for a bare knuckle brawl and that's something maybe they they haven't had known about or have seen but you have to to tell them about that yeah, I think I think we have so many guys here that love Nebraska. You know, they're like dyed in the wool, you know, corn huskers. I think, you know, the 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 legacy of the great teams of the seventies, eighties and nineties, uh, even Coach Polini teams in the you know two thousands, the legacy of those great teams and the black shirts. I mean it, it's it's on the present. I mean you, you, you hear about it all the time. I think the biggest thing that we've tried to do is make sure our guys understand that like legacy is a continuum and you're living up to the legacy of those who came before you. Uh, but, you know, you have this opportunity to be a corn husker. You have this opportunity to be a black shirt in this moment. And you're building that legacy for people who come after you. And so not not just saying, hey, you know, because I'm a Nebraska player, I, I deserve X, Y, and Z. But more, you know, hey, I, I play at Nebraska. This is what it means. But this is what I have to make it mean. And I think that's that's been a key for us. I think that's been a key for our guys to understand that it's not just about the legacy they live up that they live up to, but the legacy they build for others to live up to that come after them. Coach, what was it like? I, we haven't talked to you since your, your first game there, but what was it like just that first time running out into a, a sea of red? It was unbelievable. I, I, I you know, I've, I've, uh, I've got to tell you, it was, it was, you know, it was, it was a night game. You know, we obviously were sitting there at 0-2, you know, uh, you know, the Colorado loss was, you know, kind of an ugly loss. And, you know, you're not sure what it's going to be like, you know, people in the hotel, people on the bus pouring in. I was just overwhelmed with the support. Uh, walking into the stadium, uh, but then you know it, you get there. It's it, it's warm ups, and, and literally there's ninety thousand people there to watch warm ups. You know they're all in their seats, and um, you know Isaac Gifford and Luke Reimer, two of our veteran players, were sitting there talking to me uh, right before the game. You know right as right, you know we're you know finishing warm ups, and uh, Luke uh, or Isaac said to me, "Excuse me, you know coach, this will never get old." Hmm. And I was like, you know what? <laughs> you know he's been here for five years. I said I I, I can see that. You know it's just an unbelievable atmosphere. The people care. And uh, makes you feel very, very, you know, you feel very, very much so that you need to go out and play well for them. I know you have bigger goals, higher standards, but how much would it be, how important would it be just to get that program back in a bowl that used to be like breathing for them that hasn't been the last five or six years? Well, well, you know me well enough to know I won't even say that word probably. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, You know, I I think the biggest thing, but but, but no, to, to your point, We've got to we've got to make ourselves relevant. We have to earn respect. And you, you know, to, to be you know, we need the practices. Like, you know, we have a really we have a, a really really good group of young players that like they, they we need to go to a bowl game and they need to practice for fifteen practices or sixteen practices and get themselves ready. You know, so um, that's the expectation here. So we have to have that expectation. You know, going to bowl games is really really pivotal in building a program. And so, um, you know, I think the biggest thing for me is is it all ties hand in hand. You know, uh, we have to play in a way that, that earns people's respect, that people want to watch us play. Uh, hence, you know, kind of how, why Friday night was important. At the same time, we have to go play, you know, teams from the SEC or from the Big 12 and play in bowl games so that we continue to build that brand nationally. Uh, people, people can see, hey, what Nebraska football is all about. I know that right now you're focused on getting to that point in the season, but next year the league is going to change um, a lot. And you, you, not only do you have to prepare for the Wisconsin's and the Michigan's and Ohio State's uh, of the world, Penn State's, you have to deal with USC and UCLA and Oregon and Washington, all four teams who are p- p- pretty damn good right now. Uh, and they have different styles. How much do you have to take into that account as you build the program for the future and what you're going to do schematically and, and all those things? Yeah, I think that's, I think it's vital. I think, I think it's important. I think it's important to understand, you know, A, what your recruiting base is, B, the type of players you can get, C, you know, uh, what can win. You know, I mean, we, you know, we played two, I think we played three games now with like 15, to 15 plus mile an hour wins, you know. Um, you know, we played, we played, it was 25 to 30 mile an hour wins at times in the game at Illinois. 
So to be an air raid offense, I don't know would work out great for us. Um, you know, playing defense, playing special teams. And you know, we blocked the kick and, and stole a possession on kickoff team in that game. You know, being a team that can run the ball and run some option, I think that's, that's smart for us. You know, so, um, you know, we, we probably, you know, when we play teams like USC, we're probably, you know, we'll go out there. Hopefully when they come here, it'll maybe be a cold, windy day. And uh, so our, I think our style just has to fit, um, A, who we're playing, and, and but, but also B, like our weather, our elements, the things that we have at Nebraska. Uh, just like, you know, I was a, I was a two-back I-formation power football guy at Temple when we came to Baylor, and you're looking around and you have, you know, you have four NFL receivers and a couple NFL running backs. You don't you don't sit there and say, hey, you know, let's be in the eye. You know, we, we spread it out. I mean, obviously not like what Browse did, but, you know, we played with three receivers and four receivers because – it didn't make a lot of sense to have Denzel Mims stand on the bench next to me. So I think it's a combination of all those things. Coach, is, uh, is it easier to get things done quickly in recruiting uh, or reshape a team than it was in your prior uh, stints? Uh, because when you left uh, to go to the pros, a lot of things obviously changed in college football. Is it easier now or is it equally as difficult and just difficult in different ways? You know, I'm still pretty pretty early in the process, so I would probably you know deserve some judgment. What I will say is, you know, I was, you know when we came to to, to Baylor and you know um, you know we got there in December. Um, hey, we're lucky there was no early signing period back then because because mm-hmm. we would have you know, a lot of guys would have been gone. You know, Charlie would have already signed with SMU, Abram would have already signed with Tulsa. You know, so you look at those guys that came in mid year without ever even visiting. Uh, those guys were unbelievably important for us. Um, but we were only able to sign, I think, like 28 kids that year. You know, I think we signed 40 when we got here. So the, the redu- reduction on the roster limits and all those things um, allows you to, you know, really allows you to, to bring in a bunch of players if you need a bunch of players, you know. At the same time, um, you know, I, I don't think the answer, personally, is, is huge roster turnover year after year. It's not the answer in the NFL. Free agency is not the answer. It's not the answer, I don't think, in college. You know, you still have to grow and develop your players uh but you do need to have the ability when you lose somebody to go out and get somebody who's equally as good matt you, you your run at baylor was 111 then you made the bowl game at seven and six and then of course the team that played for a big 12 title and then ended up playing georgia as they were about to get really good in the sugar bowl do you have any regrets at all about your time at baylor uh no no i, I love my time at baylor i love mac rhodes uh i love jeremiah dickey um, I loved all the people that I worked with. You know, I love the president. I love I love the university. I love the campus. Um, you know, um, you know, we make we make decisions in life. I'm not a big regret person. The mm-hmm. only thing I've ever regretted was not effort. You know, um, even go you know even going to Carolina. Well, you know, it didn't work out for me. I don't I don't regret a thing about you know about going there. Um, you know, but I, I did love living. In, I did love living. You know, in 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 Waco. I did love the people. I, I love I love some of the restaurants. I love the things we got to do. So. Uh, my daughter Leona, you know, she'll tell everybody she's going to Baylor someday. So, um, no regrets. I mean, I, I think uh, you know, the only thing probably I ever regretted was that that um, you know that uh, uh, you know that that, that 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 Sugar Bowl. So much of the attention was that you know, hey, I was going to leave. Mm-hmm. And I remember being, you know, I just never felt like that was fair to the players. You know, it's hard not, you know, it's hard to figure out how to handle that. But um, if there's anything I regret, it would probably be that. But I'm so grateful for my time there and the people that were there and. I took a lot of pride with you know when you know obviously they went through the COVID year, but Dave did a great job. But I took a lot of pride in all those all those players. You know, I remember uh, uh, Petrie and Terrell uh, FaceTime me from the locker room after they won the the Sugar Bowl Big Twelve Championship game. Excuse me, seeing McVeigh, you know, make that tackle. You know, I mean, I, I was proud of the work that we had done with them. Obviously, we didn't do it; Dave did it. But you know, I was really happy for those kids. I, I met some great people there. Would you have had that same kind? Could you have seen? And COVID was strange. It's like an asterisk. It depends if you were good or not. But you had built that program in year three, and do you feel like it was on the verge of having the twelve and two year had you stayed? I I, I would never want to say that because I'd never want to do anything that takes away from what you know what Dave and them did. I mean, I think they did. I think Coach Rand has done a wonderful job there. You know, uh, if when we were at Temple, you know, we 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 went two and ten. You know, we went six and six. We didn't get to go to a bowl game. We went to the conference championship game the next year and lost. We came back the next year and won. Those kids were there was no way they were going to lose it again. You know, um, you know, the, it mirrors that there. Just but I wasn't there to do it. I, you know, we we chose to leave. And, and I think Coach Aranda did a, a marvelous job of handling obviously COVID and then and then taking that team. That was a really talented team. 
and uh, taking them, you know, taking them and getting a, a great young quarterback in shape and shaping and taking them all, taking them all the way. I, I want to go back to something you said earlier about uh, seeing the sea of red for the first time. Uh, there's a guy sitting in my right uh, who has never done that, uh, and uh, I mean, he bleeds Nebraska red, Matt. Um, do you do you think we need to get that done for Smokey in the next year? Yeah, that, that sounds ridiculous to me. I mean, I, obviously, he knows the coach. <laughs> he knows a bunch of people. So. I, I know the most important person, Susan Elza. I, I think that's I, exactly right. So, <laughs> I think they, they take a little, a little less jogging on the weekends and get in the car, take a trip. I mean, let's go. You know, go. one of the reasons that's happened, I've been to some of the great moments in Nebraska history, but all of them bowl games or road games, but I've never been to Lincoln because it was always high school football on Friday. And it was like impossible. But didn't you say that there's some new flights now that come out of Texas to get to Lincoln that or Omaha that weren't there before? Yeah, well, yeah, there, there were some. Unfortunately, a couple of them sold it, so they didn't go great for us. There, but there's one from Houston. There's one from Houston directly to Lincoln that, that's helped us in recruiting. And then, you know, obviously Dallas goes right to Omaha. So I, when I fly in, I usually fly into Omaha. It's only about 40 minutes to my house. So, um, but yeah, you really have no excuse. You know, there's 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 time, there's ways to get here, time to get here, and. I think we'll treat you pretty good, but yeah. it really is a great, great, great atmosphere and a great place. Is it even better than you thought it would be? Yeah, yeah, I, I've, I've enjoyed everything about being here. I've enjoyed the, you know, I mean, it's after, after the first game that we won, you know, I'm, I'm, I go to the press conference, I walk out, and Tommy Frazier and Eric Crouch are sitting there waiting to, waiting to, uh, waiting to, uh, you know, congratulate me and introduce me to some people. Up, uh, we came in on, you know, he came in this Monday and. Coach Osborne came in and watched film with us, and you know, because we've been running some option plays, and and uh, we asked him to come in. You know, I called him today. Would you come in and watch them with us? So, you know, you you get to do, you get to do a film session with uh, Tom Osborne. You know, it's like it's like it's like it's like the relationship I had with Grant Taft. I mean, those those are coaching icons, and when they're willing to you know look over your shoulder and help you, but not you know not never want to step on your toes. I mean, they're they're it's, it's really special. There are thoughts that Nebraska, when they moved to the Big Ten, which of course financially has been amazing, but that the, perhaps the footprint of being a part of the Big 12 in the state of Texas disappeared. You have obviously spent a great amount of time, along with your staff in this state. How important is that, and how important has it been to reestablish that? Yeah, it's, it's, it's critical. I mean, my goal is to have six to eight guys a year from the state of Texas, so when we look up one day, we've got, you know, we've got, 30, 35, 40 guys, you know, from Texas on the team. So we can have, you know, 30, 35 guys from the state of Nebraska, 30, 35 guys from Texas, and then, you know, sprinkle some guys from other places. Um, I think that would be, I think that'd be great. And so, um, yeah, obviously not, not being in the state, you know, hurts, you know, hurt, you know, maybe can hurt a little bit, but, you know, I think as, as, as college football is going national, as, as the A&Ms and Texas is, and now Oklahoma, as they recruit, you know, more nationally, uh, it opens up opportunities. And it opens up opportunities for guys that want to play our style of football. That you know, the Big Ten is going to be you know one of the preeminent conferences, uh, if not the preeminent conference in college football. Really, us in the SEC as things move forward. And so, um, as we've gone in Texas and spoken at the high school coaches' clinics and all those things, we've told them, "Hey, we want to be uh, Texas's Big Ten team. You know, if you want to, if you want to play in the Big Twelve, great. You know, there's lots of opportunities. If you want to play in the SEC, there's opportunities. You know, if you want to play in the Big Ten, you know, come to Lincoln." You have uh, Nebraska over the years. The West Coast footprint has been there as well. Some of their best players ever have been from California or even up in the uh, upper northwest of, of this country. Does the addition of Washington, Oregon, USC, and UCLA, doesn't that make that even more of an opportunity for you? Yep. Yeah, we, 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 uh, you know, we hired Tony White, who, you know, Tony's, Tony's uh, got some uh, um, uh, El Paso ties, but it's spent a lot of time out West Coast. So he, he's been through the West Coast as well. So, you know, we'll go anywhere. You know, there's a lot of great players from New, New Jersey and Pennsylvania over the years. You know, Mike Rozier, Irving Fryer, to name a few. So we've, we've continued that pipeline of going back to, you know, kind of where we're from. So I think, you know, I think, you know, that we're going to search high and low. And as, as, you know, this is a conference now that stretches from New Jersey and Pennsylvania to, to California, Washington, Oregon. I think what's pretty cool is, you know, some people are going to be flying five and six hour flights. We're going to be, you know, we're going to be an hour to two hours, maybe sometimes two and a half hours for each flight. Uh, we're in the central, central part of the country, and we think it gives us an advantage, hopefully, uh, when you get late into November, uh, you know, in coming years. One more question, if you don't mind, Matt, thank you for your time, is that uh, sure. your team is three and three. It is the off week, so you can work on, as you mentioned, a lot of different things. 
Uh, what do you – and having a quarterback that was not your plan starting quarterback and the job that he has done, how remarkable has he played? Oh, it's been phenomenal what he's been able to do. Uh, it's funny, before I was talking to you guys, he was in here and we were watching – we were watching Charlie Brewer, um, uh, a couple of plays that we run, you know, and I was showing him how Charlie doing it, you know, and just some of the things that he does, Charlie did naturally that were pretty impressive. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think Heinrich's done a phenomenal job. He's a guy that he's a, he's a Husker, you know, he's, 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 he's a, he's a Nebraska kid, you know, dad, dad walked on him, played football here, played fullback here. Um, he's a great, 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 great athlete. Mom was a track star, sisters are track stars. But, you know, he, he stepped up and was ready for his moment. And that's, you know, that's kind of the way we practice. It's the way we do things. Um, you know, we're trying to get the culture here where we don't make excuses. And, uh, you know, when Jeff got hurt, he went in. You know, he found a way. He's, he's won three of his last four. So um, it's not perfect. Uh, but the great news is he has the rest of this year, and he has two more years. So hopefully he can continue to develop. And uh, I really like the guy. Well, it's no surprise that, you know, uh, Nebraska legacies come from fullbacks because it is fullback you, yes. which, le which leads me to my question for you. Top five Nebraska fullbacks. Oh, you're going to get me in trouble here. <laughs> you want you want help? Well, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. Uh, well, I'm not, not in, in no specific order. I, mean, <laughs> I don't want to get myself in any trouble, right? But I'm going to go. I'm going to go. Uh, well, I'm going to go Rathman. I'm gonna go, people don't know Roger Craig moved to fullback when they brought in Mike Rozier, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go him. I'm going to go the Macavica brothers. I'm going to go Schuster. That's those those five. Um, who am I missing? Who's smoking? Anybody I'm missing? I need Schlesinger. Isn't he the one that scored oh, like the go ahead Schlesinger, touchdown? Scored, yeah, yeah. Schlesinger. Oh my god, no doubt, no yeah. doubt. And there were others. There yeah. were others. I mean, Jeff Kenny back in the day when they won the national title ran like one uh, with Jerry Taggy <laughs> as the quarterback. So that was that's that he ran like a fullback. I love it. <laughs> hey, thank you. I know that it's it's uh, a, a lot to for ha to have you on the show, but it is the off week. Great timing. We appreciate you and and good luck moving forward. And I will, I I have to do what Paul said. There's no more excuses. My God, you have Garrett, Susan, Elza, uh, Coach Hume's daughter, you uh, among others. I I need to get the link and we'll work that out. Yeah, I'll just say this. I'm not coming back on the show until you've uh, seen oh, you face to face. That's, oh my that God. seems fair. <laughs> All right. We'll, we'll talk soon. Appreciate you guys. Thank you, right. Matt Rule. Nebraska football. I've seen Nebraska all over the country. Greg, remember we watched him win an ass.